I'm here in Selsey on the English coast, not far from Portsmouth, and I'm uh, honoured to be with Sir Patrick Moore. Sir Patrick, you have lived, it would be fair to say, a pretty incredible life, and you've lived in pretty incredible times too. Well, certainly incredible times. I mean, there can't be many people like me who know or knew the first man on the moon, the first man in space, and the first airman. <laughs> I met them all. <laughs> I've lived through a great deal. I've seen a lot, of course, so be most exciting times. I can't imagine any other time, to be honest, that human civilization has accelerated so quickly. As you say, you met Orville Wright, I believe, and, and Buzz Aldrin, you count him amongst your friends. I think most certainly, and Neil Armstrong too, and the, I know all the, 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 I was on the Moon Committee, so I, I knew all the astronauts before they went up, and I still do. I saw Buzz the other day. What is it about those guys? How did they strike you? They are quite different in nature. Neil, for example, is reserved and doesn't like publicity. Buzz, in the best sense of the word, is a publicist. What they do share is uh, more than their fair share of common sense, bravery, and resource. That's what they share. And they have the qualifications for an astronaut. They've all got that. I'd like to go back to, to Buzz Aldrin, and you mentioned um, that you're a good friend of his. I'm constantly harassed by people who insist that the moon landings were conspiracy theories. And of course, Buzz was known for punching uh, somebody who accused him of being a liar. Why don't you swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon? Saying Will I misrepresented myself? Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. What I'll say about people like that is, if ignorance is bliss, they must be very happy. If Apollo had failed, then space research, man space research, were you? held up for a very, very long time. I did all the broadcasts, but my suggestion, I said to the BBC, look, if there's a breakdown between Washington and here, and it's all stuck, if I'm, in the, if I'm in the studio here, I can hold it. And I did, and twice I did have to hold it, but they said for Apollo 17, you voluntarily stayed back the whole time, you must go over for the night launch, so I did. We have ignition, two, one, zero, we have a liftoff. Can you begin to describe it? I was sitting there, and it just suddenly hit by a flash, it was fire, then by a wall of sound. Things started going up. In my guess, of course, it was just having three people whom I knew. You presented uh, episodes of The Sky at Night for the BBC since 1957. And it's my understanding that you are, in fact, in the Guinness Book of Record as being television's longest serving presenter. It's the longest anywhere. Um, if I survive the next April, it'll be our 700th Sky at Night program. We haven't had a break. So um, that's a world record. And possibly a world record that won't be broken, because television doesn't work like that now. And mostly longest have been cut off. I've survived. Can I ask you the big question as we're getting near the end? Is there a place for religion in science? No. I had once a talk with a fundamentalist. Everything in the Bible is literally true. He said, when did God make the sun? God made the sun on the fourth day. He said, as day and night are regulated by the sun, how did God know it was the fourth day? No reply. <laughs> I think that's a perfect place to end. Sir Patrick Moore, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.